The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets a little bit mixed this morning. We have Microsoft. They're becoming close to the biggest company in the world, right on Apple's heels. We'll get into that. Microsoft trading higher after their earnings last night. Right now, you have the S&Ps up by about four points, trading at 45.70. You're about 20 points away from the all-time highs we had yesterday. Zooming in on the S&P, we had quite a sell-off, 11.30 a.m. We trade from almost 45.90 down to a price point, 12.45. You're talking about 45.60, almost a 30-point acceleration. And then, that's the final 15 minutes of the day, folks. You traded from 45.80 down to a low of about 45.63. We're just above that level right now at 45.69. NASDAQ 100 trading higher. Microsoft trading higher today. Google was lower. Uh, they've reclaimed some of those losses. The NASDAQ 100 up about 28 points. We'll jump over to the tech stocks in a moment. We got the Dow up 34 points right now, 35,678. We got a lot of companies with earnings this morning. We're going to go through them. You got Boeing out. You got Coca-Cola out as well. The Russell negative by seven points right now trading at 2286 and why not uh well let's jump down to see what else we have going on before we jump to microsoft crude backing off a little bit 8341 we were up monday to 8541 we'll be talking to our man teddy kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com at 40 past the hour we'll be talking a little bit of forex we'll be talking a little bit of crude oil as we usually do as well gold contract right now positive by two dollars at 1795 notes and bonds talk about a little bit lower yield how about 1.57 percent what happened to 1.67 percent 1.57%, the yield on the 10-year. We're up nine ticks at 130.28. The third year is up a full point and three ticks at 160.02. And we jump over to the VIX right now. Volatility index back under 16 at 15.93. Okay, Microsoft, we jump over. Strong numbers from Microsoft, man. You're up six bucks. You spiked to 319.06 uh, on the overnight high. That's an all-time high, folks. We came into last night with an all-time high yesterday of 312. We closed it out at 310.11. Uh, again, this is a daily. I mean, look at this acceleration. Just from where we were on October 4th, you were trading at 280. You're gonna open at 316 uh, this morning. Higher prices from Microsoft, and let's get into some of the headline numbers from Microsoft when you look at what they've done. How about 22% growth? Staggering numbers for a company of that size. Azure revenue growth slowed slightly in the quarter, although on a constant currency basis, accelerated from the prior quarter, accelerated. Uh, PC supply constraints cut into the sales of Windows to device makers. Earnings, they beat by 20 cents, 227 versus 207. How about that revenue beat? 45.32 billion, 43.97 was the estimate. Revenue climbing 22% year over year. Any company, not any company, I guess. Most companies, almost any company, would kill to grow at 20 plus year, uh, 20 plus percent a year, let alone doing that on the numbers that they're dealing with, tens of billions of dollars, staggering growth. Fastest growth since 2018. How is a company the size of Microsoft accelerating its growth rate, let alone just growing, accelerating? Revenue grew 21% in the previous quarter, uh, 20.5 billion in net income, growing 40 eight percent that is quite a margin right they take in 45.32 billion and they got income of 20.5 billion respect with respect to guidance microsoft called for 50.15 to 51.05 billion uh that's about 50.6 billion at the middle of the range market was only looking for 48.92 billion now this breaks down all the different sectors of the company you have azure at the top they did have some pretty accelerated numbers back in 2020, but you're still talking about Azure and cloud services at a 50% number green across the board, up and down the line here. Um, intelligent cloud segment, that's going to comprise Azure, delivered $16.96 in revenue, 
up 31% year over year. That's more than the 16.51 billion the market was looking for. 50% year over year. There's your 50% like we talked about. Azure public cloud revenue growth was expected to be 47%. I mean, imagine that. You're coming in a number that the market's looking for 47% growth in, in probably the most important sector um, in the company, and you beat that number in terms of in a big way at 50%. The company's more personal computing business, Windows devices, gaming, and search advertising, 13.31 billion in revenue, up 12%. So look at the difference there, right? When you look at Azure, they're at, what, 16.96 billion and growing at 31%. You look at personal computing, they're at 13.31 and only growing at 12%. You see the importance of that part of their business. Productivity and business process unit, that includes Dynamics, LinkedIn, and Office, still under what Azure is, 15.04 and up 22%, but still growing less than Azure. Um, the cloud, folks, the cloud in a big way. But Microsoft, you're up six bucks. You're going to open at 316 this morning for their earnings. Uh, Google, pretty decent earnings as well. Getting into the 15 minute there for Google. You spike lower to 2724. The conference call begins. You've almost gotten it all back and you have gotten it all back. We're actually higher right now. You got a 2795, the last print. You got a bid ask that spans the close of yesterday, 2793, 2790 by 2794. Uh, you're going to see some higher numbers across the board um, in terms of the numbers and the stocks we're dealing with. Just big numbers. Not many misses right now we're dealing with. And Microsoft, as I referenced at the top of the show, closes in on Apple in a race for the world's val most valuable listed firm. Whoops, what did I just do there? Scroll back down. Uh, interesting that they're that close away. $80 billion. I hadn't realized it from Apple as Microsoft's been on a tear. Apple been consolidating a bit uh, based on a 2.8% gain in the pre-market trading. You got Microsoft within a stone's throw of Apple being the biggest company out there. Apple had quite a lead at one point. Uh, Microsoft going to come in at about $2.39 trillion. Apple sitting at about $2.47 trillion. And uh, you see, let's to, to expand this, in terms of Microsoft's first quarter, help it contend for the top spot in market cap. And look at the volatility here, right? Uh, Saudi Aramco, a pretty steady teal in there. Trick ticking across, across at about $2 trillion. But look at the differences we've had in terms of Apple in the black really accelerated itself. You have Microsoft been on its heels for a while. Um, and then you have the spread in the blue there in terms of Apple versus Microsoft reached a peak almost at the beginning of this year where remarkably Apple had a $700 billion advantage. There is Microsoft down below. Uh, looks like they were coming in at almost $1.6 trillion at that time. And you had Apple pushing almost $2.4. You had a $700 billion spread to make up, and they might make it up by the end of October. That is quite an acceleration. Talk about overperforming um, in a big way. Microsoft versus Apple there. They're going to get the whole spread back, and you see it. Right now, that blue line down to less than $200 billion. I think, as they said, we're going to open at about $800, uh, excuse me, $80 billion difference, which for those companies is one way or the other. We take a look at Apple this morning. Uh, Apple, basically flat, 149.46 uh, as we look for the open. All right, folks, we got the S&Ps up by four, trading at 45.69. We got Bitcoin right now down $2,900 in the 59,070 Bitcoin with some selling. We'll get into that as well. When we come back, we'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. It's earnings season, folks. We'll be talking some earnings. We'll be talking some options. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps positive by four, NASDAQ 100 positive by 33. Uh, checking back in, you take a look at Google. Google now above where it was yesterday. Uh, Google trading at 2,800, we're at 2,793. And Microsoft sitting above 316, we're at 310. Both of those putting a little bit of a bid into the NASDAQ 100. You have Boeing shares trading higher this morning. Boeing out with their earnings as well, up about four bucks. Getting into what Boeing had to say. $183 million charge from the 787 Dreamliner flaws cut production to two a month is what they had to say. Uh, revenue rose to $15.28 billion, up 8% below, though, the 16.3 the market was looking for. $132 million net loss in the quarter that was narrower, narrower than the 466 that it lost a year earlier. A loss of $0.60. Cents. Market was looking for a loss of 20 And revenue, a slight miss, but the market liking the fact. Uh, no, we're... Yeah, so they have a 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time conference call trying to find the exact reason for a bid. But nonetheless, you have Boeing up at about 2.13.65 this morning on those numbers. All right, folks, with that in mind, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern Time, live on Tiger TV. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, walking you through the market action, talking about hypothetical trade setups. It's the most wonderful time of the year. we got a bunch of earnings cooking. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. And for the record, if you're talking about Boeing, their CEO was just on um, a national television station talking and uh, pretty positive statements. That's why the stock is up about four bucks pre-market. There you go, folks. That's why you listen to the program. That's right. I know. Pretty <laughs> pretty cool action. 213 from 209 Boeing. We got a lot of stocks moving this morning, Kevin. The two big ones last night were Microsoft and Google. Microsoft, man, you almost can't overstate. I was going through the numbers to kick off the program. 22% revenue growth in Azure. They're growing at 50%. They're going to open at an all-time high today. They're right on the heels of Apple now as uh, the biggest company in the world. Pretty remarkable action in terms of even overachieving all the expectations a company like Microsoft has going into that number. Yeah, M Microsoft and Google Alphabet, one's going to be up, one's going to be down. Both companies putting up numbers that small countries would be envious of in terms of revenue and earnings. So, you know, the, the, these companies, they just do everything so well now, Tommy, and especially Microsoft. I mean, you know, if you think about the years of Steve Ballmer 
and other guys running Microsoft. And then you look how this company's run now. It's nothing short of spectacular. So, yeah, Microsoft doing extremely well. Um, you've got, you know, here. I think the futures right now reflect what we see across the earnings uh, spectrum today, and that is some are up, some are down, uh, big numbers and small numbers, and all leading to a market that three of the four are positive, but none of them are up very much. You know, it's it's like a, a big pie with some good and some bad, and all things considered, it's relatively just slightly good, but pretty neutral. Yeah, I was jumping around. The first ones I just happened to see were a bunch on the positive, and then I got to yeah, Visa down last night. Uh, Texas Instruments, I believe, had a little bit of a miss there as well. Um, Coca-Cola to the upside, so kind of both sides of it. But the big headline number, um, Microsoft, Google, the two followed. And I think Google's even, I mean, they snuck. They started off even. They're basically flat to almost even positive as Google clawed back some of those losses. So we go from yesterday to today, Kevin. We got a lot of stocks lined up. I think over it was like this week and next. We're getting just a mammoth number of the S&P 500 companies out. They keep coming. What are you guys talking about on the program coming up at noon Eastern time today, Kevin? Yeah, a third this week of all those Oof. indices is coming out with earnings just this week. So Lightfolio is going to do a presentation on Amazon ahead of their earnings after the close on Friday. And then we're looking at several names. We're in the final decision-making process it's nice. probably going to be maybe a Teladoc and a Shopify. Uh, Teladoc has earned Jeff the Bell today, Shopify, before uh, the open tomorrow. We've also got Caterpillar. We could do Ford. We'll look at all those today as a um, lot. You know, they're, they're coming so fast, Tommy, that it's hard to decide which one. We kind of try to stay as lean and agile as possible and do the ones with the, the most high-profile earnings. And, you know, that's a good segue, Kevin, talking about uh, liquidity, because in the options market, sometimes we're dealing with either you have single leg trades, right? You can always just buy a, buy a call, buy a put. You can have whether it's a debit call spread, you can sell um, a, a credit spread. Then, of course, you can do the four leg trades. Can you go into a little bit in terms of especially when the options market, because we're very fortunate in equities that many times, especially for most of the names we follow, there's pretty decent liquidity in the equities. But when you start getting into those more complex option trades, how liquidity can be so important sometimes when you need multiple legs, um, multiple different st um, strike prices, if you're out of the market, and how that plays into to the options market? Yeah, I mean, when you think of an option strategy, some are very simple, some are much more complex. And as you get more complex, chances are the bid ask on that complex trade, let's say if you're doing four sides of a trade in, in say, an iron condor, where you're selling a call vertical and a put vertical, that bid ask could be a little wide if you're trying to do all four sides at once. So that's why sometimes what we say is if the market's wide, in a, in like four a four way trade, do it more the call side than the put side. Put in two individual trades like that. Put in a call vertical, put in a put vertical, and then work the two around that. It might might be much more easier to fill a trade like that. So yeah, when you talk about more complex trades, or when you talk about names that aren't as liquid. Right, that's when price discovery and working your order and understanding where you want to do a trade and not and never, never putting in a market order for a trade. Always using price discovery and limit orders is what we uh, teach. We don't ever say put in a market order for any option trade. You should always work at a limit where you would want to sell or buy that option and. Either it gets taken or it doesn't. Right now, there's sometimes you may have to be a little more aggressive. You could do that with a wide bid ask, but definitely not putting in market orders. That's what we teach. You put limit orders and and move them slightly one way or the other based on you know on on the overall liquidity. And what but what I mean by liquidity, that width between the bid ask, right? You have to be able to get in and out of a trade for as little slippage as possible, Tommy. You guys do such a great job, man. It's one of the things that I really learned early on in terms of because in theory, Kevin, you know, I can learn all the theory and the definitions of the, the principles and the strategies that you guys go over. And you say, oh, that's great. Well, I'll just do an iron condor because that's so simple and, and that's the strategy that I want to 
you know, employ. Um, but I didn't have the skill set that said, hey, you know, when you're placing four leg trades you, in, a, in an equity. Now, maybe if you're at Apple, like at the market right near it and you're coming in, there might be enough liquidity on, on a multi leg trade. But on a lot of different options, placing those two, whether you, you place the call spread, the debit call spread, the debit put spread at the same time, then you're able to trade them out. And folks, that's why I create a demo account if you haven't done it, practice in those types of trades um, and seeing how Kevin, Tom White and the team, they walk you through it. Uh, it's pretty cool in terms of what you learn, Kevin. We appreciate it. We'll be watching the program today, man. A little book company called Amazon. They'll be talking about kicking things off at the top of the show, earnings tomorrow. Kevin, man, we appreciate it. We'll be watching at noon Eastern time today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. My pleasure as always, man. Folks, tune in. You heard it right there. The nuances in the option market. Uh, you can learn the basics. Check out the program. They do an outstanding job, and this is a great time to watch it with all the earnings going on, 12 noon Eastern time. We'll be right back for the open, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now. We get the S&Ps up about five points. We have the markets a little bit of a pop on the open there. 15,601 NASDAQ 100 up 52 points. Let's jump to the two big dogs out with their numbers. Microsoft up about 2.5% right now at 318 and climbing 
318 and climbing. Let's see how Google's doing. Look at that. Google can't hold a good thing down. 2817, Google up a full percent after spiking to 2724 last night. Uh, quite the ex acceleration indeed. And back to Microsoft, man. Yeah, these things are rocking in a big way. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 40 points. S&P's up three. Some of the other companies out with their numbers. Let's go down the line of companies moving right now. McDonald's, I was going to say Microsoft. McDonald's up 2%. They were up to 244. Uh, McDonald's earnings beat. As COVID restrictions ease, fueling strong international sales. It's interesting how domestic versus international, huge difference uh, in terms of whether it's the pervasiveness of some of the variants, pervasiveness of vaccinations, different restrictions in different countries. So McDonald's have risen 11% this year. They're at 184 billion, as they put it. Earnings, 276 versus 246. They beat by almost, what's that, $160 million in the quarter, 6.2 billion versus 6.04. Net sales rose 14%, topping expectations of the 6.04. Same store sales climbed 12.7, there we go, um, from a year ago, and 10.2% on a two year basis. Some of these companies, the two year jump, it's amazing to put it to put it lightly, right? Um, in the home market, same store sales increased by 9.6% from a year earlier. On a two-year basis, same-store sales rose 14.6%. I mean, think about this. That is a mammoth number for a company like McDonald's. The chain credited its new chicken sandwich, a famous orders promotion with rapper Saweetie, not familiar, and other menu and marketing promotions for its strong performance. Uh, quite a number there for McDonald's, and you're seeing it on the open. They give back some of that gain, though, 190, uh, excuse me, 1.9% in the positive at 240. Coca-Cola, out uh, with their numbers as well, up 2.7%. Getting into the numbers for Coke, consumers drink more beverages away from home. They have a bunch of different. I was going through this early this morning. So the headline number, 65 cents versus 58. They beat on revenue as well. Net income for the three-month period, $2.5 billion compared with $1.7 billion a year earlier. Net sales rose 16%. That beat the expectation by almost $300 million. Organic revenue climbed 14 percent unit unit case volume which strips out the impact of currency and price changes up six percent and came in ahead of 2019 levels the soft drink unit which includes the namesake soda volumes increased by six percent in the quarter the nutrition juice dairy and plant-based beverage business reported growth at 12 percent thanks in part to strong sales of minute made i'm just going through the line because it's like a beat across the board Hydration, sports coffee and tea segment, volume growth of 6%. Coffee grew 19%. That's because they have Costa Cafes in the UK that are opening back up. Volume growth was up 8% in Europe. It now sees full year organic revenue growth of 13 to 14%. They were previously looking for 12 to 14%. It expects adjusted earnings per share to increase 15 to 17%. They were looking for 13 to 15% previously. Big numbers across the board. Kraft Heinz, they beat as well. Stronger earnings for the year thanks to higher prices. Let's see how they're opening up. 3708, they're up 1.7%. Now, Kraft Heinz, uh, net sales fell to 6.32 billion. I love how they say for the Jello maker. Uh, 6.44 billion a year earlier. They expect full year adjusted earnings before interest, 6.2 billion. The market was looking for what were the previous estimate was 6.51, um, excuse me. Excluding items, they earned 65 cents versus the 58, so they beat as well. Let's see what else we had. Uh, Robinhood, got to get to Robinhood. Uh, not a beat for Robinhood. Be wary of this company, folks. Uh, they are a company, that's all I'm willing to say, 9.3%. Look at how this thing got ahead of itself, right? To 85 bucks, it's been a slow decline. Maybe you had some area of $40 that you were holding up well. Uh, I think that might have been near the IPO price. You're now below the IPO price. And they're in a sector that they make so much of their money off of crypto that they may be in trouble if that gets disseminated to some competitors. Third quarter, total net revenue, 365. The market was looking for 431. That is a massive beat, uh, miss. That would be akin to a company like Google or something supposedly taking in revenue of 43 billion and they take in 36. Yeah. A massive miss on a percentage basis, well below the second quarter's revenue of 565. Their quarterly revenue 
went from 565 to 365. The market would have been okay if it just sunk to 431, which is what they were thinking of. No, it almost got cut in half because of the surge in crypto that occurred in that second quarter that cut back. Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> excuse me, crypto has been surging back. But there's a bunch of different areas that you can buy crypto in, folks. I think you can buy it in, in PayPal. More brokerages are going to be in offering it. You can have ETFs that you can purchase in regular. Um, other brokerages accounts. Third quarter, transaction-based revenue, $267 million, Only $51 million coming from crypto. Revenue from crypto the prior quarter, 233 And do you remember how much, how much of that was Do Dogecoin? Yeah, that just basically disappeared. Uh, the CEO is going to wait for regulatory clarity on crypto before adding more digital coins to the platform, is what they had to say. Uh, net loss of $1.32 billion in 90 days. Did you see that? A net loss of $1.32 billion. They, they only had revenue of $365 million. They're losing four times the revenue they're taking in on a quarterly basis right now. Slowdown in user growth. Monthly active users, that's not a slowdown in user growth. That's a decline in users. It's not a slowdown in growth. They're not growing. Monthly active users, 18.9, down from 21.3 million. That's not a slowdown in growth. That is a decrease. <laughs> that is a, that's not a deceleration. That is a decrease. That is a shrinking of the active users. A slowdown in growth would mean that if you were growing at 10%, now you're growing at 5%. Not a slowdown in growth. Not the way to sum things up. I'm trying to overstate it, folks, because be careful of this company. Um, yes, I don't imagine that they're going to go BK overnight. But there's no reason why Robinhood needs to exist in 5 or 10 years in any capacity. They changed the industry. I'll give them that. Um, but there is no reason. There's a bunch of competitors. They make a bunch of their money off of crypto trading. There's going to be more opportunities in crypto across the board. Um, and you're seeing investors react as they're well below the IPO price, and you're at 11% down for the day right now. Let's jump to Microsoft, see how they're opening. Holding up well, up 2.3%. Google shares holding up well, up 7 tenths percent as well. All right, jumping around, what else we got going on? I talked about Bitcoin. We'll jump over here since that's a good segue from Robinhood. Some interesting numbers here in terms of selling. Uh, you're down almost 5% to about 59,000 right now. Ether also down a similar 5%. Analysts said speculators are cutting back on positions as the launch of the first U.S. Bitcoin ETF. Fan enthusiasm. Total liquidations of long crypto positions topped $700 million on Wednesday. Now, that's from BYBT. Dot com. I'm not familiar. I don't know the validity of that data. I don't know how they figure it out. But sometimes you can't see because that chain tracks everything in terms of on the Bitcoin network. Uh, positions that are held, if a position is sold, that can be seen. 700 million liquidation. Can't blame them selling some Bitcoin above 60,000 as they push it out to the public in an ETF. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Teddy Kegstad talking a little Forex. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets right now. A little bit of mixed action. Dow off 27 points. S&P's flat. NASDAQ up 47 points. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. Every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, we talk to Teddy. You can reach him every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How are you today? I'm doing good, man. So we missed you last week. We've had crude on quite a little bit of a tear, man. We hit $85 in change to start off this week. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I imagine you like the action, but talk to me a little bit about this uh, crude contract when we kick uh, as we kick off this interview. Sure. Well, I like impressing these highs. You know, I mean, you know, I'm looking at 100. So and I think we're going to continue to track higher no matter what over the next uh couple of weeks next couple of months there's no reason for any slowdown to happen in this rally yeah not much more to say man in terms of when this thing is just a one-way ship we did have that pullback from about july to august but since then man you almost can't overstate mm -hmm. from 62 bucks to 85 in the span of just over two months um and we're seeing it at the gas pumps man i have a little coupe and uh my little <laughs> coupe and it does have premium but it was a 62 dollar fill up i think the the last time mm -hmm. i went and um that is a big number folks for the size of the gas tank that i have in a little car you know um right interesting nonetheless uh where do you want to start man i saw maybe we'll start with the yen Can we start with the yen we have a little action sure. in the yen today absolutely okay so the yen is moving around a little bit today uh we are hanging below these highs i still am very bullish the uh the us dollar yen i think one of the reasons you're having a little bit of a resistance right now and a little bit of a pullback is because you have the rally going on in the 30 year and the 10 year they were yeah. up nicely yesterday and also today so i think that right there you're getting a short-term little pullback on the dollar on some of your major currencies because of the interest rate move but you're not seeing a big sell-off in the end and i think that's because of the oil rally you know so i think the pound is kind of grappling with a little bit of trying to break out to the upside um i would but I do think that the yen right now is just it's flirting with new move highs. It's just right now consolidating. And I think that as soon as you see the interest rates start to sell off even remotely here, that you're going to see the yen go bid. And especially if oil get breaches, you know, if it starts pushing that 88, you know, 88 towards 90 dollars a barrel, I can't see how the yen wouldn't make new highs again. So that's pretty cool. So we, uh, looking at the U.S. dollar there, so you have crude mm -hmm. rising which is putting strength and i'm asking you you know this is how mm -hmm. you're saying it and I, I, the, the the crude contract will be putting strength behind it um mm -hmm. but at a time that you have decreasing yields um right. that might pull some of that away and those two forces kind of fighting each other 
Correct, correct. Cool. Especially with the U.S. dollar yen, I see that that's okay. that right now is kind of they're in a little bit of a tug of war. But I think no matter what, oil is driving it, and and the and the, the when it comes to the interest rates, they're they're in a bearish market right now. They're just in an upside correction. So I yeah. I think that you're most likely going to see even if the interest rates pause or remotely retrace back to the downside, that you'll see the um, the U.S. dollar yen go bid at least for that currency cross you know nice nice yeah it is interesting man in terms of i think if uh the listeners listen they know kind of how you feel about inflation i, I get pulled mm -hmm. to your side pretty easily in terms of the argument it would be tough for mm -hmm. me to imagine um over the an extended period of time that you do have yields decreasing to any dramatic degree sure. but i'd say it's 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 always interesting even this pullback man i 1.57 percent uh the yield on the 10 year i said what what happened mm -hmm. on 1.67 percent man some big moves continue right uh in that note and bond market there sure uh what are you looking at next where where do you want to head to next okay uh well let's take a look at the uh the euro us dollar so we had a little buy signal a week and a half ago. We had to set a nice little low. What was it, around 115? Like, what was it? Just a little over 115 even. So, but right now, I think you're at, what, at 116, 16 right now. I think it's a good shot that you'll get a challenge of 117 even in the uh, Euro US dollar. So we had a little resistance last, last week where we kept on buffering around the similar highs for multiple days. If we take that out, I don't think you're going to have a slingshot major rally. But I can see right now, especially with the choppiness in the interest rate environment, um, that the euro US dollar has a really good shot at probably getting another handle, maybe even a handle and a half. I would use caution above 117 half, pushing 118. That's probably about the extreme you'll see for that one. Um, and I think one of the reasons you, you might see this lift in the euro is that as the, the US dollar S Swiss right now is, is on, on edge right now. So with the pound trying to break out to the upside with oil, you know, that is definitely an issue. But as long as the yield curve is going the direction it's going, I think you're going to have a little push on resistance with the euro. But use caution that that market could fall out very quickly. That's the one that is the weakest of the European currencies. Um, the U.S. dollar Swiss, since I mentioned that, that's the driver. Now, I think a few weeks ago and over the past couple months, I've been pointing out to you guys how um, you know, the pound is typically the most volatile of the European uh, contracts. Uh, the euro is obviously the biggest. But lately, the Swiss has been the one that has the biggest average rain, range on most days. And for the fact that they're pushing offer right now, I think that you have to kind of watch that one because it's getting extreme. So I think if that snaps back, OK, then that's really going to shake up the European currencies. And that's something that could hold the euro. So I think that as long as the U.S. dollar Swiss is on edge, you, that euro is getting a little bit of a lift and might challenge resistance. But I think that's also going to be the circuit breaker that will hold the euro back, because if you see a bounce in strength in the U.S. dollar again, like if the bonds sell off and oil all of a sudden continues to rally, Odds are you'll see the U.S. dollar Swiss get a big rally again. You'll see the euro probably fall back. The pound could chop around. That's the one that's going to be the toughest trade, I think, when it comes to the European currency crosses. Uh, the pound is, you're saying? Yes. Yes. Nice. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I have the pound up even, you know, I love my Fibonacci's. You had quite a mm -hmm. run, man, from September to the highs we had earlier this year, 142.50, it looks like. And we pulled back mm -hmm. right to almost 50% level um, at about 134, that level. And I have that on a weekly going back to the short-term time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, decent moves, man, from one, you know, even a couple of days. I know you have the charts, sure. but decent moves in these in these Forex markets um, with volatility. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, volatility, you know, in the market, Teddy, you know, we have a VIX at about 15, <sighs> 6, 16, which is not bad right. considering... Right everything we talk about when we chat with you in sure. terms of the volatility we got jobs sure. numbers it's amazing it's october 27th we're gonna have mm -hmm. a non-farm payroll number yet again that should probably have some more expectations on it mm -hmm. uh what kind of volatility like historically right now in some of these forex moves because they seem like they're pretty dramatic moves compared mm -hmm. to the type of moves that we not normally get but you know in terms of just there's so many variables is this mm -hmm. a particularly volatile time in forex right now versus normally or what wh where are we in that market just because i'm not mm -hmm. as familiar well, you're, you're actually uh, bringing up a nice little foreshadowing thing. I think we're on the beginning uh, of another currency war. Um, I don't see it. I think it's evolving right now, and it's going to hit us full-blown 
probably going into the end of the year, into the new year. Um, the central banks around the world are not on the same page anymore. So, and we are the United States and probably the Bank of England and the ECB are going to be the last ones to follow in line if they even, you know, go in a cohesive fashion with the rest of the central banks. So that's going to cause a lot of pressure, you know, so yeah. as yields start to change and, you know, the currency market is a big market, you know, it's a big deal if the, if the Fed does something or the Bank of England does something or the ECB. But when you have this con confederation of all these other countries saying, you know what, we don't care what you're doing, we're raising rates, you know, it's it's going to have an influence on our markets. So, and I think that's going to be the biggest bomb. Stay right there, Teddy. We'll be right back to finish this, right? We'll be right sure. back, folks. Okay. Awesome. You have to practice, sure, but you also need need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. You want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage. The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by five, the Dow negative by two, NASDAQ positive by half a percent, and the Russell negative by about half a percent right now. So, Teddy, just to finish. So, and I agree, we've heard, heard the central banks already in different countries, whether they're raising rates, maybe to get a, ahead of hyperinflation in those countries. So you see that battle playing out, providing some volatility across the board as we, as we kind of navigate this unforeseen. Nice. Um, I think I that really... we are at the very beginning stage of what will become a central bank war, without a doubt, over the course of t going into 2022. I think that's going to be one of the biggest factors in the Forex market in the first two quarters of the year for next year. And if the U.S. is slow to do anything, let's say the U.S. and the, the European Union, um, that they're slow, other countries are raising their rates, they have higher yields. Um, mm -hmm. Where does that push things? I know there's a million variables, but how would that 
influence things, that variable, if we're late, which looks to be very possible, for sure, mm -hmm. that we're late to the party. Right, and I, I do believe that that is the case. We will be late to the party, so obviously anything can happen. Uh, but what I do think is what you are going to start to see is trends in, you know, we've had a lot of sideways action in certain currency crosses. Once these things start to hit, those markets, those currency crosses are going to start to explode, you know, nice. and I think that I think that you're going to see, you know, remember how we've been talking, I've been really putting this into your viewers heads over the past six months is that we have divergence in the currency markets, extreme divergence. So the dollar index is not the best indicator at all anymore of what's going on. The dollar index now is really only a good indicator of what the of what the euro and the pound may be doing. The rest are pretty much off the table, you know, and I really think that that divisiveness is going to happen uh, as we continue through the rest of this fourth quarter and into the first two quarters of next year. So meaning like, so where's the demand going to happen, you know? So I would say that you're probably going to see a lot of this um, start throughout Asia and also Northern Europe. See, the EU is not all on the same bandwagon. You know, you yeah. got to remember there's the ECB and then there's the components of the euro, you know, yeah. of all these different countries or states or whatever you want to sure. quantify them as. And I, there's a lot of dissension going on and that is going to shape up what the markets are going to do you know I so love it, i man. think i think where you have stable euro right now and pound and swiss next year it is not going to be that way teddy man we appreciate the conversation as always we'll talk to you next wednesday have a great week man thanks so much